trying to get them uncomfortable in the offensive end. Well, there's something about these players. They wait. They see the first four going out. They see yesterday's action on Thursday. Now they finally get to play. Familiar fives for both teams. You follow these programs. You know these players well. In the paint, Tyler Cook and Luca Garza can be a handful of AA teams to the tournament. A minor clock issue to get us started. But now we're ready to roll. And what a matchup we have to start our day. As March Madness is underway in Columbus, Ohio. Great to have you with us, everybody. Cincinnati will control the tap. Very different styles of play and philosophies with these two teams. That's what makes it such an intriguing matchup to start our day. Yeah, one team that loves the offensive end as Cumberland lets it fly, and another team that really relies on their defense. Look for Cincinnati to really try to get up in the jerseys of the Ohio Hawkeyes players, trying to make sure that they just can't cut and get wide open looks from three. Iowa wants to play fast. Here's Cook. Cook was tripped. And they'll call it on Trayvon Scott. You have this extremely athletic post player in Tyler Cook. He's out of St. Louis. Then you have the fundamentally sound post player in Luca Garza. And that's one of the reasons Iowa, with 22 wins this year, feels like they have a chance to make a run. They're not just a one-dimensional team. But they can shoot the three. The freshman Wieskamp. And there's a steal. Keith Williams jumps the lane. Williams all the way with the reverse. And the first points of the day. Cincinnati. Cincinnati is going to have to do that. When they get a steal, force the issue. That's the one time the hero ball is okay. Take it in the fast break and score because sometimes Cincinnati has trouble scoring in a half-court offensive set. It's going to feel like a road game today for the Iowa Hawkeyes. They struggled on the road this year going 10-10 and 10 in conference play. But we're only 100 miles from Cincinnati. And it is a partisan Bearcat crowd here in Columbus, Ohio. Another thing you do when you have problem scoring, you rush the pace. Just like that. The quick pick and roll by Cumberland. He gets it inside, but uh, again, you have to love the steal right here. Williams, he gets it, and not only does he get the ball, but he doesn't wait for the offense to come down. He knows that he can get tough scoring for this team, so you need to make it happen off of the defensive turnovers. First free throws of the afternoon. Trayvon Scott at the line. He's a 6'8 junior from Darien, Georgia. Knocks the first one down. Hey, a reminder that first-round coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship begins tomorrow at noon on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. For more information on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Two free throws for Trayvon Scott. Iowa's already come down. They've gotten a pretty good shot. But right now, you see Cincinnati upping the pressure. And when you do that, it's up to the offense to see if they can just take a deep breath, slow down, and make sure they play their type of ball. Iowa needs to be the best Iowa right now and not worry about Cincinnati. Isaiah Moss knocks the first one down for the Hawkeyes. Moss, a 42% three-point shooter. He shoots about three and a half a game. Iowa in the NCAA tournament for the first time since the 2016 season. Had a disappointing year last year. They're coming off a loss their last game against Michigan in the Big Ten tournament. On the take. Not there for Nicaea Brooks. In transition come the Hawkeyes. Moss, little mid-range. And he's got both baskets for the Hawkeyes. Nice shot by Moss. Great switch by Brooks out there that time using his length, but Moss just knocks it down over. Almost a turnover. Jennifer, the point guard, is fouled on his way in. So the attacking style of Cincinnati, they've already drawn a couple of fouls from the Iowa big men. And Jennifer will head to the line. Outstanding savvy point guard of the Bearcats. Foul was issued to Jordan Bohannon, by the way. Hey, you can watch every game live on your phone, tablet, computer, and favorite streaming devices with March Madness Live. Watch now at NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. We're just getting started. All four networks will be in play. CBS, True TV, TNT, and TBS. 
Tyler Cook gives it up. Isaiah Moss, five early points. Moss on the take again. Had it denied, swatted by Brooks. Was met by a group of Bearcats. That's going to stay in the possession of Iowa with nine on the shot clock. That's one of the plays we'll see tonight that shows up in the stat sheet for Brooks because he's going to have a lot of blocks just by intimidation of being in the right spot at the right time. That time, though, actually getting the block. Brooks is long, 6'11", big wingspan, over seven feet. Bohannon doesn't need much to get his shot off. Misses his first try. So, Chris, Iowa against Michigan in the Big Ten tournament. They missed 15 three-point field goal attempts. They started 0 for 14 in that game. They lost 74-53, a 21-point loss. The game prior to that against Illinois, they made a Big Ten tournament record 12 threes. Good luck inside when Brooks scores the layup. And as Coach McCaffrey said, sometimes you just have games like that. The Big Ten Conference has proven to be one of the best, if not the best, conference this year in college basketball. And so you're going to have those rough nights, especially on the road for Iowa. That's why this game is so important at a neutral site to see if they can get some rhythm away from being at home. Guards are running into trouble almost five seconds there. Shot clock down to nine. Here's Cook. He can't create. And Cook rises up. No, it's Brooks with the rebound. Brooks, Brooks is everywhere. I, I mean, we're four minutes into this game, and he's had a block shot, gotten some points inside, but more importantly, intimidated just all over the court. That's run down by Keith Williams. I thought that ball hit the baseline for a moment, but stays in play. Another opportunity here for Cincinnati. Cumberland. Gives it up. Williams. Three-point try up and over the backboard. It'll be Iowa ball. And that leads us to our first timeout. Good work passing the basketball. The Bearcats are getting a lot of looks inside. And they lead it 8-5. to five. Our player to show up to a game listening to his favorite playlist. But for Cincinnati, the headphones that they use deliver so much more than just their favorite song. I have them right here in my hands. Notice they're lined with prongs on the inside. These headphones are unique because they're stimulators that create neuroplastic adaptation and get them mentally focused for the game. Bob Mangine is their athletic trainer. He also oversees their medical services. He is all over this stuff. He partnered with Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, which is just right outside of Dayton, Ohio. They also have goggles in the morning. I think we need a pair of these, by the way. <laughs> I like them. They have a blue light, and it reduces the melatonin, so it helps you wake up faster. Their beds also have red underneath them, so it helps with recovery. They're all over everything. Uh, they have been for the last five years, and it's helped the Cincinnati team. Put a couple of those in your bag, Allie. We may need them a little bit later. Exactly. She already has yeah. the four. Exactly. Justin Jennifer, the lefty, knocks down the three. It's a long two. They score it, so Jennifer gets himself in the book with a field goal made. And again, on the defensive end, you're gonna keep hearing me say the name Brooks. The last play out, Brooks intimidated another shot by my count. With that miss, that's five misses, six misses inside. When Brooks is doing his thing on the defensive end, I always gotta have that look inside when they get a chance. Are they able to score? On the take and a throw down, a two handed jam for Keith Williams, and they are up. Bearcat Nation. A hundred miles from Cincinnati, and they are making themselves heard. Coach McCaffrey is beside himself on the bench again. Tristan, look at that. An eight-hole run. But this is what Cincinnati wanted to do. They wanted to make it uncomfortable for Iowa. And if you look at Iowa again, number two in the Big Ten, assists and scoring per game. You love having an offensive flow. What defensive teams do, especially teams that press like Cincinnati, they take away you being comfortable. Right now, they're having their way. Worst case scenario for Fran McCaffrey and the Hawkeyes. Tyler Cook picks up his second foul, a quick visit to the bench. Macy Daly is in, as is Nicholas Bear for the Hawkeyes. Connor McCaffrey, his first run as well. The coach's son, number 30 in black. Bear's got Cumberland. Tough matchup. Cumberland on the take. A little crossover gets him free. And a lamp at the rim. for the Bearcats. And a turnover. McCaffrey throws it away. Cincinnati ball. 
Iowa tried to get the ball inside. They pushed it. They did a great job of speeding up the pace, getting it inside, but the recovery and, and more important, the communication of Cincinnati on the defensive end right now, just really impressive. But Iowa came out of that last timeout. Now they're in the zone, but they're playing with much better energy. Let's see if they can use that on the defensive end to get back in the game. Inside the Brooks, he kicks it. Cumberland passes it up. He's on the drive. He hangs. And it is Bohannon who runs it down. Now Iowa wants to push. Ryan Greener, first run of the game for him. Iowa just can't get loose for the three-point shot that they rely upon, heavily upon. And finally, the lefty McCaffrey, no, and it's Brooks with the board. Yeah, and that time Williams didn't even need to come down and double. Right now, let Brooks play every big fella one-on-one -on -one because I was looking to pass it inside only to pass it back outside by that three-point line to get some open looks for their shooters. Iowa has missed their last seven shots. 10-0 run here for Cincinnati. They scored the first four. Iowa scored the next five. And then this 10-0 run as Scott knocks it down. The turnaround, Jay, is good. Timeout on the floor. <laughs> to be a huge story out of the mid-majors. He and Ja Moran. Woo, did you see that yesterday. dunk by Moran? Love it. <laughs> Triple-double, 16 assists. And you saw there the Big Ten, 5-0 yesterday. Eight teams in the NCAA tournament for the Big Ten. They went 5-0. Iowa, Wisconsin, and Ohio State will be in action today. And Iowa's got their hands full early. 16-5 Cincinnati. Bearcats, the winners of the American Athletic, just a turnover. Isaiah Moss lost the handle right into the hands of Cumberland. Yeah, he was trying to pass it inside the creator, and he just couldn't get it. Second guessed himself and lost the ball. Cumberland has just two points. The layup at the rim does have a couple of assists. Cincinnati has been extremely efficient. Cumberland's playing the right game, the patience. A little finger roll. That's a block as Kane Broom goes George Gervin at the rim, and he'll go to the line, a chance at a three-point trip. And that's all because of the patience of Cumberland. Cumberland can be a summary, and we're eight minutes into this first half, Chris, but it has been a significant story for Cincinnati to start their tournament run. Well, Cincinnati started off two for six, and since then, they're five for six. But just look at this, the free throws and points in the paint. Iowa is one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. They make 18 a game. What does that mean? They have to get inside. But right now, Brooks and the other big fellas of Cincinnati is deterring them from going in, trying to score in the paint. Cincinnati has Mamadou Diara on the floor. Here is Nicholas Bear, the rebound by Garza, who's just back into the game for Iowa. That was a spirited huddle for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And Ali LaForce was in that huddle. What Fran McCaffrey have to say, Ali? Coach McCaffrey just said, guys, we have to settle down. There's a lot of time in this game. But he said, we're being timid. Attack the basket. And that's one thing I talked to uh, Jordan Bahannon about yesterday. When they lost to Michigan, he was 0 for 2 in the entire game. And he said it, quote, I wasn't aggressive. When I get up more shots, our team runs better. Right now, just 0 for 1. They got to get him going. They got to get him going. And also, hopefully, Coach McCaffrey got his team going by putting them in the zone. It gives them a little bit more energy, a little more confidence, because you can trust your teammates to be behind you. And right now, they got to get stuck. Iowa went nearly six minutes without a basket. Now they've hit in back to back possessions the freshman, Joe Wieskamp, the freshman from Muscatine, Iowa. First team, all Big Ten freshman team this year. Average nearly 11 a game. With their three-point shooting prowess, they have enough firepower to get back into this game quickly. DA in the losses, Wieskamp only averages about seven. In the wins, 12. We need him to get active and active early. Good stop on the defensive end right there by Iowa. The freshman, Diara, gets the side of the backboard. Now Moss, who had a quick five in the first five minutes of this game. Bohannon running the point. Garza sets a screen for him. Here's Bear now for three. Nothing there. Broom right on him. Good battle inside. Cumberland has Wieskamp. Shot clock down to six. Bohannon on the take. Little crossover. Bohannon, nothing at the rim. Head into a wall. What a great job again. And I'm going to keep talking about these two guys all evening. Whether it's Moss, whether it's his other partner inside, Cook, whether it's the big fella. They are playing with position. Hands up, no fouls. 18-10 Cincinnati. And that was deflected 
by Bear. Shot clock at eight. Cincinnati very comfortable in the late clock scenario. Cumberland, he can create. And he gets a friendly bounce. Now that's a big time move. We talked about earlier him only taking one shot. I really love Cumberland's patience. It, show, patience. it shows me a lot of maturity on his part, wanting to win more than individual accolades, but he's going to work. Garza fouled and won. Luca Garza gets Iowa some paint points and a chance at a three point trip. Garza has been battling inside him in the yard the whole time. You're going to see Moss come back in. But these guys, I'm sorry, Brooks come back in with the battle inside, not just to try to score, but also for post position to set screens for your guards. It's a good one inside right now. First break for Jared Cumberland as he'll sit. Keith Williams will join him. And Luca Garza scored 14 against Michigan in the Big Ten tournament at the line. Don't forget first round coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship. ESPN2 and the ESPN app. Go to NCAA.com for more information. Not many people came into this game expecting Iowa necessarily to press, but the, the old adage is you press a pressing team, and right now Iowa trying to give Cincinnati a little bit of their own medicine. Trayvon Scott in the corner is Jennifer. Takes a peek at the shot clock. It's down to five. Kane Broom. Broom pulls up. The lefty comes up short, and it's a big offensive rebound by Brooks. Nicaea Brooks having a major impact in this game early. Rebounds and block shots and a deterrent at the rim as well, anchoring this defense. Moss missed the three and look who's got the board. Nicaea Brooks. This guy's inside. Guys is really trying to work. You need to get guards to the ball right now before he gets fatigued. He's out there running. Cincinnati trying to run Iowa's big fellas, and it could wear them down later. These are key minutes for Cincinnati with their best score on the bench in Cumberland. Another offensive board, this time run down by Scott. That's the third offensive rebound. And a travel. Kane Broom walks. He'll turn it over. I, I tell you what right now, and this is just a great job of using your body That's a pretty good box out by Iowa. We're not gonna dog them for that play But the last two offensive rebounds Iowa needs to get tougher inside and you think about it, they play in the Big Ten probably the most physical uh, Conference in the NCAA they need to kind of act like it especially on the defensive board Shiloh Cook back on the floor. He scores a little floater with one hand He's playing with two fouls, got him early, and he'll go to the line to cap off a three-point chance. Timeout on the floor, 22-15, Cincinnati. Sonic's Double Stuff Oreo Waffle Cone, made for Sports App today. Brian Anderson with Chris Weber, Ali LaForce, our producer Scott Cockrell, Andrew Greathouse directing. Columbus, Ohio is our site, first of four today. Tyler Cook caps off a three-point possession and big for the Hawkeyes that Cook is on the floor now with two fouls. Yeah, he started off the season averaging 18 the last month, though. He only averaged 10. You want him to get into his rhythm, and you like the fact with two fouls, not frustrated, keeping his patience. A little full court pressure by the Hawkeyes. Iowa has now answered with an 11-4 run here, and they pulled within six. Room down inside to Brooks. Shot clock gets late again. Down to five. Little jump hook. No. Gets his own. Nicaea Brooks finishes again. He's out the game. Can't fall Cook on that play. Cook has two fouls. You'd rather him give up an offensive rebound than to get a foul and put himself in trouble for the first and the second half. The rest of the team must rebound and box out by committee. Brooks with six points, five boards already. Two of those are offensive rebounds. Iowa made it as high as 14th in the country at one point this year. There's a push off and an offensive foul. Isaiah Moss, easy call. You have to love watching teams that embrace defense. I, I, I mean, in talking to Coach Cronin before the game, he said that he's disappointed that his guys don't get enough credit for their IQ, that it takes just as much IQ to play or, or take just as much smarts to play on the defensive is as it does the offensive is he wants his guys to get more credit for thinking and adjusting on the fly and, and more importantly for having the same effort every night forcing turnovers part of Cincinnati's game plan 
There's going to be a travel. Trayvon Scott, too many steps. Think about Cincinnati and all the headlines that the Houston Cougars generated this year. And they beat Houston in the AAC tournament in Memphis. They beat them by 11. They were down three at the half. Came back to win. That was late Sunday. So they earn a seven seed in this NCAA tournament. Their ninth consecutive trip and their 33rd overall appearance. And I like what you said when we hit the air here. You, you think about these programs that are consistent NCAA tournament contenders. Cincinnati, despite losing in the round of 64, a round of 32 in each of the last six seasons, they have been a regular, whether they were in the Big East or in the American. And they've had to switch conferences, which is tough. They've had to make adjustments on the fly. I mean, not too many programs have done what Cincinnati continues to do, and that's even through the tough times, not necessarily have to rebuild, but just keep winning and keep winning. Tyler Cook, four on the shot clock, gives it up. Garza will shoot, and he'll hit the three. The big man who shoots it at 28% from behind the arc knocks down a big one for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, but he's ready. He's fighting inside. He's been going since the tip and got a tough one inside with the M1, and now it leads to a wide open 3 4. Jennifer for the answer. Got it. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Justin Jennifer. Led the American in three-point field goal percentage this year. 45% from behind the arc. And a turnover. Again, Moss lost the handle. And the sixth Iowa turnover. Yeah, Jennifer. This is when Jennifer ran into that pick. You just mentioned how he leads their league in three-pointers, and he's going to knock one down here. Well, he also may lead the league in toughness because he's the point man on the defensive end. So what does that mean? Every time you see a little three-man weave up top, he switches onto the guy that has the ball. He plays defense the whole time of the shot clock while other guys switch out. Jaron Cumberland back on the floor for Cincinnati. Cincinnati actually outscored Iowa 7-6 while he was gone. That's a bonus for them. And Brooks with a push-off. Offensive foul is going to give the ball back to Iowa. That's his second foul, Nicaea Brooks. And Nick Cronin wants an explanation. Nick Cronin definitely wants an explanation, but I, I tell you what, I give Jordan all the credit in the world because when you go down there and you box out as a small, that's all you want. You want to make it uncomfortable for the big guy, and look what you got. Another foul on their big man. Good job fighting inside. It's like flicking off a mosquito <laughs> right there, but Bohannon able to draw the foul. Eight-point Cincinnati lead. Wieskamp, the freshman. Garza just hit the three. Dumps it inside. Well, the triple team triple comes team. around Cook. <laughs> now Bohannon. Bohannon, little floater. Not there. That was Cumberland who kept it alive. Scott pulls down the board. Cincinnati's really controlling the boards right now. Trayvon Scott, turnaround is good. That's his second one. Impressed with Cincinnati on the offensive end, trying to push the pace. And then look at it. When Iowa pushed the pace, Cincinnati gets back on deep. Bearcats in transition. And an offensive foul. Cumberland crashing into Garza. It's going the other way. Very little contact. But down he goes. And he was out of the restricted area. And enough to warrant that call. The fans are smart. They see the play. Now it's just up to Cincinnati to get back on the defensive end, try to keep the same pressure. And for Iowa, you don't feel sorry for anyone on the bad call. You keep pushing it back. You got to follow on Cumberland, their best player. It doesn't matter if anybody agrees or not. Now, can you execute? And look for Garza inside. He has some mismatches. And let him go to work. Garza. Kicks it. Wieskamp. On the tape. Wieskamp plays it in. Nice action going to the hole for Joe Wieskamp. It has been a week since Iowa has played their last game of the Big Ten Tournament against Michigan on Friday after their record-setting performance against Illinois. Jennifer airball, but right into the hands of Rashawn Fredericks. Didn't hit the rim. Shot clock doesn't need set. And Jennifer in the corner. Another three for the point guard. No communication by Iowa. First, you give up an offensive rebound. Air ball, okay, I granted that. Granted, that's hard to get. But the second time, you see Jennifer, their best shooter, come to the corner. Somebody has to communicate. Tyler Cook goes. Tyler Cook is fouled. 
And that'll quiet him down for now. 100 miles from Cincinnati here in Columbus, and the Bearcats are making some noise. Columbus, Ohio. SEC, matter of fact, it was 4 0 yesterday. We'll have Tennessee coming up next against Colgate. Right now, it's Iowa and Cincinnati, the 10 7 matchup. Tyler Cook rattles one in and out. Let's check in with Allie LaForce. What do you have, Allie? Guys, the big message in that last Iowa huddle was offensive rebounds and putbacks could be the difference in this game. Five offensive rebounds for Cincinnati. They're just getting outworked out there. And when Cincinnati had Jennifer hit that three in the corner, Coach just turned around and looked at the bench and said, he's a shooter. Why would we not go out and guard him? But like you said, Z-Web, it's all about communication, and they're lacking that right now. On offense, he said, we can't stand around. Flash the high post, move the ball, find the open shooters. Just don't be stagnant. Yeah, you're right, Ali and Beer. They have to trust their offense, and it's hard when everybody's up in your jersey like Cincinnati. But but this is outstanding, a, a, a crazy stat. Seven turnovers for Iowa. No steals, no blocks. And so right now they're kind of putting themselves in the bad trouble. Break the press. It is Jennifer. He was the first to double figures. He gets his own rebound. It's another offensive board. Cumberland, no, and another offensive rebound. That's number seven for Cincinnati. So Seme, his first run, comes up with the offensive board. Broom gives it up. Cumberland, that little set shot, little mini jumper, no good. Think about this, Cincinnati is not even getting big production from their top scorer in Cumberland. And yet they lead it by 10. Cumberland's got just four. And look at Iowa, those last 14 games. That's always what worries me. Do you go into the tournament hot and with any rhythm? Right now, Iowa has it trying to find that rhythm. Guards are working inside, just can't get the rebound. Those are the shots Iowa has to have. Jordan Bohannon comes up empty on the three. One thing I don't understand about how Iowa's playing right now, why are you pressing Cincinnati? Cincinnati doesn't want to push the ball. They're happy to take it with one second on the shot clock. You usually press to take time off the clock. They, they don't care. They're getting it to their spots and then scoring easy on you. And here's Broom. So Simmons kept that one alive. Another offensive rebound. Jennifer knocks it down. The offensive glass. Cincinnati is roaring right now. Part of that as well. When you press in the zone, you leave open the offensive rebounding angles. Carza is calling for the ball. Get him the ball inside, and then he can cause a double team and get it outside to the shooters. He's going to work. Garza went for 14 against Michigan at the Big Ten tournament last week. Commanded the ball in the first half and scored the ball well inside. Cumberland. Three-point try is up. Fredericks can't hit it. Wieskamp with the rebound. Iowa needs a push here at the end of this first half. They're down 10. Wieskamp all the way in. Joe Wieskamp scores at the basket. Again, for Wieskamp, that litmus test is about 12 points. You need him to be aggressive. The more aggressive he is, the better chance his team has of scoring. Minute 57 remaining in this first half. And the kid from Muscatine, Joe Wieskamp. Larry Pieces in concert with Jared Cumberland are why Cincinnati has a chance to make a run this year. And their ancillary pieces have been great, especially Justin Jennifer, who is the first to double digits. He's got 10. He's hit two threes and a long two, but now a turnover. Wieskamp, 4-3, knocks it down. A quick five for Joe Wieskamp. And this crowd knows that the way Wieskamp goes is the way that this Iowa team goes. Cumberland now saying, no, I got to go to work on my own. Get us in this game. He's shifty. So Sime throws it off the backboard. And a foul on Wieskamp, I believe, is who they got there on Iowa. Look at this three. This is what I like is that that's a catch and shoot three with a hand in the face. Now, Iowa doesn't have guys that are necessarily going to get you off the hop and shoot the ball. But I tell you what, you give them an inch of space, they could knock it down. That's why it's up to them to be patient, wait for the screeners, get a good look. Reese can't finish fourth in the Big Ten in three point shooting this year. Can be electric from behind the arc. But remember that drive he had freed up the Hawkeyes a little bit. A little turnaround, right? The sweet spot for Scott. He's hit another. That's his third. Second time Iowa has given up that jump shot middle. Now, if you want to give up something, maybe that's what you give up if that's what the team decided. But Iowa letting it fly. Cincinnati group rebounding more, getting one inside. Tough shot for Joe Wieskamp. Had a man right on him. It is plus seven on the rebounding differential for Cincinnati. And they are plus six with offensive rebounds. 
Bohannon clears it away after the Scott miss. Under a minute to go. Here's Bear, long range three. No, it's badly. Like that by Bear. He could knock it down, but a rush is when you know the guy's going to shoot it before he can catch it. And, and you kind of knew Bear was going to let that fly, even though the clock is in his favor. He just wanted to take his time, set his feet, because when he does, it's usually good. It is Cumberland, the player of the year. And the American who controls this possession. Now Jennifer on the drive. Nothing there. Cumberland. And the little floater. He's got a quick release. Another offensive rebound. No, it's ripped away by Wieskamp. Shot clock is off. Iowa can play for the last one of this first half. For Iowa, can you be patient and get what you want? And Cincinnati, can you communicate on the defensive end with help? Bohannon looking for help. Turnaround is good. Jordan Bohannon just before the horn sounds. Cincinnati led by as many as 13, but a surge for the Hawkeyes. And it is a fins of the floor. Steady leader, Justin Jennifer. Let's hear from Allie LaForce before we start the second half. Allie. C. Webb, Coach McCafferty, no difference in the message. I mean, you completely nailed it, uh, Chris. Coach told me that he really liked their energy in those last four minutes offensively, liked the way they attacked. The shot selection was much better than the start of the game. If they could carry that over to the second half, he'll be happy. Very concerned about the rebounding, the nine offensive rebounds that led to the 11 second chance points. He said what's really frustrating is you, you know that's what they do, and you still let them do it. So when something's on the scouting report and they still execute it, it can be very frustrating for a team, but they're looking to turn that around now. You know the coach has prepared them all week, so you can share his frustration saying, wow, guys, come on, we know if we execute this way, we can get it. But usually for a team, first game takes a little bit of time to get into your own rhythm. Let's see if Iowa can do that. Well, Brooks had a terrific first half, and he draws the foul. Tyler Cook picks up number three. So right out of the gates in this second half, Cook goes to the hole, misses a layup, and then commits his third foul. And it's an early decision here for Fran McCaffrey as Brooks unable to connect on the first free throw. Yeah, and I don't even think it's a decision. As you see, I believe Rome is about to come in. I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, I, I believe he's about to come in right now. No, Kreisner is about to come in. I'm sorry. And when you have a guy like him who's been letting it go, getting into the paint, hopefully you can let your big man cook, get to the side, take a deep breath. So tough to play in the tournament, any game with foul trouble. You have to make sure you stay in the moment. So one out of two at the line for Nicaea Brooks. Brooks with seven points, has five rebounds, and he has been tough on the Iowa Bigs. Cook on the bench now with three fouls. Ryan Creener is the third option in the post for the Hawkeyes. Got to wait for the Creener. He'll pull it, and he knocks it down. Good to see one go through for Ryan Creener. Gives him about six points a game. And this window of time now before Cook comes back on the floor will be interesting for the Iowa Hawkeyes and where their offense will come from. Iowa again. Now they're in a 2-3 matchup of me, but what that means is the two guards at top, they may switch and may move. Besides that, the three in the back hold their positions inside. Right now, guards are trying to be the man in the middle. A good pass. Oh, and it's blocked. That was Wieskamp flying high, and he pinned it on the backboard. Bohannon kicks it down to Creener. He's got deep position. Creener, a flurry of moves, and he scored in back-to-back -back possessions. And Cook is up on side of the bench. Cook is jumping up. Praising Creener saying, come on, keep it going. And that's what you need your leaders to do in foul trouble or not. You've got to be a good player and sometimes a better cheerleader. Williams offers it down to Brooks, hesitant this time. Creener was right on it. What Creener's had a nice impact here. Jennifer for three, and he is fouled on the shot. Three free throws coming. Cumberland, I love his patience. Good block right there inside, but. It's all on the patience of Cumberland Wieskamp. Sometimes as a dunker, you can bring it back, cock it back too much, and give the little fellas a chance to block it. Wiesner said, I don't care where you put it, I got it. And that last play, you get a foul by running through the defender, not fouling the guy shooting the shot, but pushing the defender through who was trying to set the screen. It's a two-point game. That foul is on Moss, so side out. No foul on the shot for Jennifer. Two-point game. Iowa went on a 9-2 run to end the first half. Cumberland's been quiet. Cumberland gets himself free, comes up short. There's Garza with a rebound. There's a foul on Iowa. So it's going to stay right here. 
Ryan Preener with the foul off the ball on the rebound attempt. Preener in there trying to do all he can to get an extra possession for his team. Now, if you are Cincinnati, a play that has worked for you every time against the zone, and I mean every time, is when Scott gets it in the middle at the free throw line. He's turned around and made two shots, and he's also made a nice duck in pass. Look for 13, get him the ball in the middle off that press. Let him be the point guard from the middle press position. Time of possession is more of a football stat, but it does favor Cincinnati in this game. They've had a ton of offensive rebounds. They have had Iowa in a defensive stance for a long time, and Brooks gets the friendly bounce in the Nine points now for Nicaea Brooks on four of seven shooting. Jordan Bohan and runs into a wall. Good defense by Cincinnati. Up and down. Here's Garza where he's at his best. On the block. Little turnaround hook is good. Come on, get him the rock. He's calling for it. He's five for five. He's feeling himself today. And he started off by encouraging his team, getting on them when they were down. He wants to pull his team back in the game himself. Let him get some looks. Well, you know the most comfortable spot to be when you have a bevy of three-point shooters is right down there on the block. And Garza has had a terrific year. 13 points a game this year, four and a half rebounds, high field goal percentage. Williams rises up. No, it's Moss with the rebound. And now Iowa can tie and take the lead on this possession. Marks down 13 in the first half for the lead. It is Bohannon. First lead since it was 5-4. And the sharpshooter from Marion, Iowa. He was looking at the crowd as he let it fly, telling the crowd, you know this is good. Don't worry. I got you. See if Cincinnati has an answer for three Cumberland answers. That's what he does. <laughs> Player of the year, the American. Now the crowds are going to get into it. After the jumper by Iowa, he let his fans know as he's here. And Cumberland just looked at his fans and said, don't worry, I got our back tonight. Garza passes it up. Garza patient. And Garza finds some space, had a block. Oh, jumping for Garza inside. Looked like it could have been a foul right there, but he doesn't need to get frustrated. Just keep going to work, doing what you're doing. But more importantly, Iowa needs to communicate on the defensive end. They're letting some guards get the ball in three-point shooting position without having a hand up. Cumberland with Wieskamp on of the freshman. Good defense. Shot clock down to four. Jennifer gives it up. Here is Scott. Good five by the point guard, Justin Jennifer. Cincinnati with an answer after Iowa took the lead. Moss, it was a whistle off the ball. I don't think the shot was off in time. It wasn't prior to the shot. Bohannon's three briefly gave Iowa the lead. It'll be Cincinnati ball when we come back. Good action here in our first game in Columbus. He's thick. He's thick. <laughs> Cincinnati, we told you as we went to the halftime break, they had a lead, five-point lead. They're 23-0 when they lead at the half this year. Matter of fact, their last loss was in the NCAA tournament last year. When they led at the half, their last loss was against Nevada. They lost by 12. Nevada made that run. Now they're trying to exercise those demons from a year ago. It's been six seasons since they have gotten into the Sweet 16, but this is a very good team in Cincinnati. And just as Iowa took the lead, the Bearcats had an answer. Shot clock down to four, a kick to the wing. Here is Broom. Three-pointer no good, another offensive rebound. That's double-digit offensive rebounds for Cincinnati. Wieskamp pulls it down. So two missed threes for the Bearcats. Right now, can Iowa take their time, be patient. Now you don't have the big fellas inside, but get it inside and kick it out just like that. But couldn't knock it down. Wieskamp comes up short. He knocked one down in the first half. A 42% three-point shooter. Four-point game. Cincinnati led early quickly by 13. It was 18-5. to five. They were feeding off this partisan crowd here in Columbus. Jennifer for three. He's made five shots. Three of them are from behind the arc. It's an 8-0 Cincinnati run after Bohannon's three. And that's over and back. The Hawkeyes turn it over. Right now, a little frustration between the Hawkeyes. 
see Weez Camp and Bohannon kind of going at it. Just a little bit of communication, not too much frustration, but on the 10th turner, that, that, that's, that's what the defense, and, and again, it does take smarts to play defense, but that's what defense and effort can do. Now, if you're Iowa, make sure again, you watch Brooks and, and, and you've watched the middle guy coming inside, being that facilitator. Scott has done a great job catching at the free throw line, knocking it down. Cincinnati trying to extend this run. Here goes Broom, gives it up, inside, outside. Scott, no. And this is Bear who wrestles down the board. Ten turnovers for Iowa, ten offensive rebounds for Cincinnati. Creener, and on the cut, Nicholas Bear. Good action by the Hawkeyes. That's the patience that Iowa needs to continue to exhibit. They can knock it down, they can shoot, but can they stay in their comfort zone? And you can. Just trust each other, take your time, get the best shot. Ten seconds. Easy call as soon as it hits 20. And Iowa turns over Cincinnati. This is that patience. Look at this. Take your time, draw the two, see what happens. If not, pivot, reverse pivot, and get it outside. And also, help your teammates out. Don't just stand and watch right now. All hands on deck, cut, knock it down. This bench squad for Iowa, they play well together. Creener and Bear and Connor McCaffrey. That's going to be a whistle on Trayvon Scott of Cincinnati. So the fouls are racking up. Iowa relies heavily on their free throw shooting and free throw attempts. They get to the line 18 times a game on average. And here comes the coach's son, Connor McCaffrey, into the game. Two-sport athlete is McCaffrey. He's hoping the basketball run takes him for a while, but he's also a member of the baseball team. He's already got a few hits for the baseball team. Tyler Cook back on the floor with three fouls. They clear it out. Cook lost the handle. Bear back tap. Shot clock still ticks. Bohannon swings it. Too hot for Bear. And another Iowa turnover. That was such a great idea by Bohannon. He, he caught everyone off guard. And as a player, you just got to look at him and say, my bad. I thought you were going to shoot it. But he drove with the intention of kicking it out to Bear in the corner. That's why they call him the freight train, and it's a block. Cumberland just found a new gear. He's so crafty Sneaky and Sneaky quick. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, yeah. he's got smoke coming out of his ears. <laughs> yeah, on the restricted line, that's an easy call for the officials. They've done an excellent job so far today. Ron Groover, the lead official. Tim Clogarty, Steven Anderson, the standby official, Greg Evans. Two shots. For Jaron Cumberland. Now the Bleacher Report app connects you to the moments that matter faster. Follow your friends and give your take on highlights, scores, and more. Download the BR app today. Great to have you with us. First of our four-game run in Columbus, Ohio. Finally, game day arrives here in Columbus. And a great crowd to see this first matchup. Cincinnati and Iowa. And it has been a back and forth affair. One out of two for Cumberland. Iowa down seven to the ball. Let's see if you can go inside the Garza or Cook. If you go inside the Garza, maybe Cook can offensive rebound. Or they can do some high-low passing in there, but they need to make sure they force the issue inside. Ben forces the issue outside. Says, don't worry, guys. I'll loosen them up inside because I'll keep knocking it down out here. Nicholas Bear lit up Illinois in the second round of the Big Ten tournament. Made five threes on his own. Iowa had hit 12 in that game. Broom looking for help. That's a hot pass. Good catch under there by Brooks. And Brooks will finish. That was almost a disaster for Cincinnati. But the big man with good hands. Cook calling for it inside right now. See if they get the high low. Garza takes it. And that spot has been open for both teams. Again, look at the big fella going inside in the zone. Both teams are vulnerable at the free throw line with the guy coming up top being a facilitator. Garza's got 12. Here's Jennifer, steps inside the arc and hits a long two. That's a basketball play. That's a point guard right there. Great play. Brooks knocks Garza to the ground. Crowd doesn't like that call. It'll be a foul on Nysir Brooks. Foul trouble for him as well. He's got three. Timeout on the floor. We got a good one here in Columbus. Urgency. But let's see if they can play patiently. That's been their issue tonight, today. Anytime they've gotten the ball and taken their time, they've gotten whatever they want. But 
Cincinnati D, making him uncomfortable. Garza, he's comfortable. That's his second three. First from the corner and now from the top of the key. Garza knocks down a big three-pointer, makes it a two-point game. They all have the green light to shoot the threes. That full court pressure continues. Garza knocks it away into the hands of Cook. So you got Cook playing with three fouls. You got Brooks on the bench for Cincinnati with three fouls. And here is McCaffrey at the South Pole. Lines it up. Beware of the weary. Again, patience by Iowa. They take their time. Cook drives, <laughs> stops on the dime, looks outside, gets it to a guy wide open three. Back in the lead just the third time. Rattles it out. Scott is he able to keep it alive. Good hustle there by Williams to secure it. And a new 30 on the clock. Tell you what, Moore's gotten a couple good looks. Moore has been wide open in the corner. The last shot he took just went in and out. Iowa needs to make sure they communicate because Garza is now the guy getting out to the corners on the baseline. Trevor Moore gives it up. Here's Jennifer now. Got time. Finds Cumberland. McCaffrey on Cumberland. Shot clock to five. Cumberland trying to get loose. McCaffrey right with him. And Cumberland gets the friendly roll. Just when you think you got it pinned in, he springs free. So you what, it looked like he got fouled five times on that play. Cumberland really working hard to get the ball inside through penetration. Nice finish. He's got ten. It has been mostly Cincinnati as they go back in the lead. And a whistle. Again, good effort, good strong finish. And fan, I appreciate Garza going over there tapping Cumberland on the butt saying, hey, you know I didn't mean anything by it. That's sportsmanship at its best. But watch this, though. They're still going to bang and go after each other in the paint. <laughs> That's what you have to love about this game. It's a 10 seed, the Iowa Hawkeyes, the 7 seed. Cincinnati finished AP 22 this year. Back in Columbus. It has been a while for Cincinnati. They last played in Columbus, Ohio, and they're only a little over an hour away. It was back in the 2004 season in the NCAA tournament. They've got a huge crowd here today. Here is Moore. And Macy Daly flying high for the board. Iowa can regain the lead. Tyler Cook goes to the hole. Cook, you no, know, he just can't get the layups to go. And a foul on the floor. Cook got his own. Cook can be a force. And they clear it out often for him to drive, but he has not been able to finish at the rim today. He, he hasn't, but he's still attacking. And the difference between a, a, a great player and, and a regular player are those that get discouraged and stop trying. And how about Cook? He's one for eight, but he's getting other guys involved. And more importantly, he's being aggressive and not getting offensive charges while trying to be aggressive. They gave that foul to Trevor Moore. Back to Cook. They cleared out. Here's Cook. He goes, and it is blocked. Nicea Brooks with the denial. Tell you what, this is why you need help. This is why you need teammates. Cook, he beat his first man, but it doesn't matter when that help defense comes over the top. Nick Cronin said the key for Cincinnati in this game is keeping Brooks out of foul trouble. Well, he has three. He's trusting him now. As we approach the nine-minute mark in regulation, he's got to be on the floor. Garza, does he have another one in him? Yikes. Air ball. He hit his first two. And that one misses everything. Yeah, he's feeling himself a little too much. If you notice, the first two shots he made, he had all day to line up, set his feet. This when he came off of a screen or just came out like a guard, tried to shoot uh, off of, <laughs> tried to shoot off a rotation, and uh, that's just not your game, big fella. So Garza, who has 15, leads the Hawkeyes in points. And the air ball gives the ball back to Cincinnati, trying to add to their lead. On the take goes Brew, and he's fouled, and count them. Cade Broom, chance at three. How about Broom in the first half with the beautiful right-hand finger roll, and this time passes up the three in order to go get contact from a big fella. He sees Cook inside. Cook with his fourth foul. What a great play right there by the young guard, understanding time, possession, and more importantly, situation, that there's a big fella inside that doesn't want to foul you. And if you get him in foul trouble, you're doing a good job for your team. There goes Cook to the bench with four fouls. Kane Broom transferring to Cincinnati from Sacred Heart. He was a premium scorer at Sacred Heart. Matter of fact, was the NEC Player of the Year.
And he is a role player now, but Mick Cronin knows he can go with the best of them, especially in crunch time. Cumberland just looked at all oh, this sea of red and told them, get your hands up and more importantly, yell loud. We need your support right now. Ball handed. He's got Brooks on him. He draws the foul. Count that. And he draws the foul on Nicaea Brooks, which will be his fourth. Well, the savvy Jordan Bohannon. I'll tell you what, the bigs are making the difference in the paint, and the guards the last two plays have taken control of the momentum. Saying, you got our big fella in foul trouble. You gave Cook one. We'll make sure you get Brooks one so you can understand how it feels to have your big fella out as well. Bohannon with seven. He's hit one three in this one. Does have five boards. He's been active. And Bohannon at the line. He is a superb free throw shooter led the Big Ten in free throw shooting percentage and Mick Cronin's going to be forced to go small here so yeah they're looking at the clock just got a a motion from Ron Gruber the lead official they've set it to 833 and nice Brooks to the bench as the Bearcats go small your eye was so important to knock down his free throws. You know you get about 20 free throws a game. And how about this? The first free throw of the half and for this team only their fifth attempt. But you got to make this so that you can get back in the press to slow down Cincinnati. They don't do it. That's their best free throw shooter. Bohannon cannot cap off the three point trip. It's a two point Cincinnati lead as we get to the 8 20 mark remaining in regulation here. What a way to start our day in Columbus, Ohio. Cumberland, he's got Moss on him, an excellent defender. And no more hasn't knocked down the three, but he's getting wide open looks. You have to get to him. Moore shakes Creener. Pull up. No, and a foul. Garza fouls Moore after the shot. Certain guys, you can tell by their body language that they just have game and they can score. Moore is one of those guys, throw the stats away, but more importantly, he's sneaking behind the back door of the Iowa defense, kind of hiding behind the big fellas, picking a spot, finding where he can let it go, and his teammates are looking for him. They put that foul on Ryan Creener, which is his fourth foul as Moore hits the free throw. Gives us a chance to remind you that Wednesday on CBS, it's the SEAL team like you've never seen them before. Ambushed, under attack, and unprotected. Don't miss a new SEAL team Wednesday on CBS. Trevor Moore at the free throw line. Sophomore out of Houston. Nobody happier to see Cincinnati take down the Cougars in the American Tournament Championship game. Hook and Creener with four apiece. Garza still has just one. Iowa plays without Cook for now. You need to look inside the Garza who's trying to battle. He can get you a bucket. Bohannon and Garza, the offensive board. And Bohannon will get it organized. Bohannon had made three in a row until that miss. See how I, I was rushing? They're not in their comfort zone right now. Just hope someone can put their head down, take time, get to the free throw line. On the take, that's a block. Wees can able to draw the foul. So Sime picks up the foul. He's getting tight. Thousand point scores. He's got Jordan here with Iowa. Matt at UNI and Jason at Wisconsin. And he knows of what he speaks. And I'll tell you what, his son knows what he speaks because he's been on his son his whole life. And I tell you, his son is saying the same thing. Let's just get a lead. Let's just get a lead. Put some pressure back on them. Let's check it with Allie. Sessions. Hey, sorry, the mic just came in. Guys, Jordan told me that he was going to be able to handle the really intense film sessions of college because his dad was so aggressive with them growing up. He remembers this car ride when all four of the boys were in the car and one of his brothers had a bad baseball game, so his dad dropped him off at the baseball field with a bucket of balls and they left him there. <laughs> and he said he's feared having a bad game ever since, and that's why he's so great late in games because he holds on to that memory. He is a clutch performer, George Bohan, and it's always the youngest brother who gets to observe. So the trauma older works, brothers. Huh? <laughs> Cincinnati ball here, they lead by three. This is Broom now, he gives it up. Moore inside, and there's Scott, Trayvon Scott with an air ball. That's been his spot. He's got a great little mid-range game, and he's been effective from there, but never had the grip 
on that shot and it opens the door for the Hawkeyes I'll tell you what and that's what Cincinnati wants is he or Brooks to get the ball in that position that's how he just rushed the jump shot thinking that the defense was going to come at him the key in this game for both teams take your time the extra pass seems to be open with Brooks on the bench McCronin goes back to Eliel Sissime Luca Garza Jack Cumberland on him Garza runs into the double team Bohannon with the left hand kicks it in the corner. That's Wees care Patience it's the patience they went through three options it was football he checked down three times you go in the post Garza doesn't get it you throw it out little fella doesn't get it go to the corner great job by Iowa. all tied at 59 and a timeout Mick Cronin he does not like the way this game is rolling along here for the Bearcats we're all even up in Columbus Tyler Cook. Nicaea Brooks has 11 points, five rebounds. Two of those are offensive, but the key stat, he's sitting on four fouls. He and Tyler Cook are both on the bench with four fouls. Cincinnati has the ball back in the game. The left-hander Broom. And it's an offensive board for Cincinnati. That was the story of the first half for the Bearcats. And another wide open shot in the corner. The defense just needs to communicate, push guys out, let them know in the zone you can't see behind you. You must communicate. Nine offensive rebounds for Cincinnati in the first half. They have 12 now. Iowa's been able to close the rebounding gap. Mismatch for Cumberland. Working on Bohan. It can shoot right over him. And it's Wieskamp who pulls it down. This is that possession I was talking about. Putting the pressure on him. Can you take your time? Isaiah Moss for three. Rattles in and out. And lost out of bounds. Trevor Moore. And it slipped right out of his hands. And a new possession for Iowa. Tell you what, this happens sometimes. You're already thinking about where you want to go with the ball. Just a little bit of frustration, but Iowa's played through this frustration to come back and tie the game now. Cincinnati, can you use your patience to get back in? Here's Bear on the inbounds, and he knocks down a three. Nicholas Bear springs wide open. And with Cook on the bench, Iowa has now outscored Cincinnati 9-2. That's on the guards right there. Just talked about Iowa not communicating. That's a wide open shot. Cincinnati not known for giving those up. 7-0 run for Iowa as they take the lead. They're up three. Cumberland's in the middle. You can get it to him. Let him go. Williams for three for an answer. Comes up short. Garza on the floor. There is there for him. Here comes Iowa. 7-0 run for the Hawkeyes. They're trying to add to it. You could sense Mick Cronin didn't like the flow of this game. He calls the timeout. Had an opportunity to secure a rebound. Lost it out of bounds. Now a turnover. Justin Jennifer. He'll pull it over Garza. That's it down. Big shot for Justin Jennifer. Tell you what, somebody's making a, te a teaching tape on Jennifer. 19, he's pulled up twice on the fast break in the paint. Great shot. Bohannon gives it up. Garza is inside. He's working. Now Bear got a height advantage. Gives it up. Garza the catch. Oh, and it's blocked. What a recovery by Trayvon Scott. Cincinnati in transition. Broom all the way in. And a foul. Defense turning into offense. Turning into free throws for Cincinnati. It is about IQ on the defensive end, like effort. This is IQ coming over and help. It's more about trust. We always talk about chemistry, guys on the bus, guys singing, hanging out. Well, real chemistry comes together on the defensive end, on the floor, when you've been beat by your man and someone comes out of nowhere and says, don't worry, I got your back, teammate. Trayvon Scott with the big block as Kane Broom will go to the free throw line. He does play a lot of the... Clutch minutes for Cincinnati comes up empty. Broom is a 76% free throw shooter. Very reliable at the line, especially late in games. Well, there's something different about this NCAA tournament. 420 remaining in regulation. One out of two for Broom. We are tied at 62, and Fran McCaffrey is going to push a chip to the middle, and Mick Cronin's going to counter. Tyler Cook is in. Nicaea Brooks is in. And you don't want to be the first to go for a pump fake. You don't want to be the first to have a mental lap 
if you're a cook or if you're the big fellow on defense inside, can you hold your own if you're Moss? But more importantly, can you communicate with your teammates on the defensive end? Bohannon working a two-man game with Cook. Nothing there. Good defense by Jennifer. Had the mismatch. Now Garza is fouled prior to the shot. And guess who? Luca Garza goes right at Nicaea Brooks. And that gamble by Mick Cronin did not go well. That was a quick exit for Nicaea Brooks. He's fouled out. And how about this? Nasir, we thought maybe was going to check Cook. No, he was not checking Cook. And what did Garza say? Okay. I know that you have four fouls. I'm going to attack you. A great job right there by the big fella. Brooks, he did his thing inside. Just guards are others. Too smart. Get him in foul trouble. Again, room back on the floor. Cincinnati has to go small. It affects their rebounding on this side. Garza, easy to the basket. Iowa back in front. Two-point lead for the Hawkeyes. Under four minutes to go. walked with it just got the pass off in time it's a huge possession for Cincinnati Cumberland lost the handle goes out of bounds was it deflected nope that's Iowa ball under two minutes they can check it there's 344 left the Hawkeyes in possession of Mick Cronin that is Dan and he is agonizing and he's sitting next to a trash can for a reason <laughs> March Madness, it Gotta does it to it. us all, right? Gotta love it. Well, Cincinnati, they've lost in the round of 64 or the round of 32 in each of the last six seasons. Iowa's in the lead by two with the ball. I see if Brooks has fouled out. That's given Garza some free space. He keeps his foot on the ground, avoids a travel, and he is fouled. Only seven free throws for Iowa. You see the reach around right there, and that's why it's important to get it inside to Garza because you can shoot the threes off of his post ups. But more importantly, you see that man Brooks is on the bench because Garza going to work inside. He's a big man that is an excellent free throw shooter, 81 percent in the regular season, and Garza is having a monster day, 20 points. He's hit both of his free throws. He's eight of 11 from the field. And he can give the Hawkeyes a four-point lead. One out of two, though. It's a three-point game. Cincinnati ball, 320 remaining in regulation. I want to see Cumberland go to work, but he also needs to trust Jennifer Brown in the corner. These three guards need to make something happen with their penetration. And Scott in the middle trying to peek in at the free throw line to get the ball in that zone. Jennifer gives it up. Here's Cumberland. Their top score. Cumberland a little floater. Boy, that was salty. Jalen Cumberland. Jared Cumberland with a beautiful little runner. 2.45 left. Oh, here comes Mo Hannon. Almost got away with a carry. And off the window, he enters with a runner of his own, Jordan Bohannon. Nine points for the Iowa point guard. If he's just coming our way here on CBS, Cincinnati led early in this first quarter by 13. Iowa went on a run, a 9-2 run to cut it to five at the break. And it's been back and forth here in this second half. Iowa needs to secure the rebound. No offensive rebounds. Garza comes away with it. Cumberland was there, but Garza able to wrestle it away from him. For Iowa, it's all about the shot. If you get a good-looking shot, you have to be happy with the play because you'll knock it down more than not. But you need to make sure you keep the patience, not only for the clock, but for foul, foul trouble as well. They've had 10 threes in the second half. Make it 11! Wees Camp! A three ball! Largest lead at six. The Hawkeyes are seven from ten from behind the arc in this second half. Wow. What a point that this team usually will win. In losses, he's only scored seven. You needed him to be aggressive. He opens it up for the inside. And how about this? You have Cook back in on the defensive end. And by the way, he can attack those offensive boards and hopefully get you an extra possession. See if Cincinnati has an answer now. Jennifer is going to line up a wide open three. Comes up short. And Tyler Cook wrestles down the board.
board. It's a 15-5 run for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Cincinnati running out of time. Huge possession. Bohannon, excellent ball handler. He's got room right on him. Bohannon turns a corner to the rim. He goes, and he's found it. Count it. Jordan Bohannon, a chance at three. This is what Iowa can do when they're in their comfort zone, taking their time, not let the pressure get to them. You take the first hit, look for the second option. Rohan said that time, now I'll just keep it myself the whole time, and I'll get a three-pointer the old-fashioned way. And one of the great free-throw shooters in the country can make it an 18-5 run. Gordy's loving that. His father, so many great players in that family and he was on point he said earlier we had a mic on him he said all we got to do is get the lead talking about his Hawkeyes and they took the lead and they are not looking back nine point game approaching a minute left it's an 18-5 run Cumberland for three oh, big shot Karen Cumberland and the Bearcats say not so fast we got a minute to go Iowa up seven with the ball when we continue from Columbus. Hawkeyes lead it by seven. One minute remaining. Jared Cumberland just hit a three for Cincinnati. And here comes the full court pressure, Chris. This again, where you need to be patient. They just broke the press the last time. The same, but you have to watch somebody going deep for Iowa as well. Bohannon and Wieskamp almost knocked away by Jennifer. Have three seconds to get it across, and it's thrown away. Bear throws it into the Iowa bench. Cincinnati ball, 51.1 remaining. Roham just goes over to Bear like his father, the head coach of the team, and says, you give me the ball. You do not make any more passes. You give me the ball. I'm the point guard. I'll make the tough decisions. Checking the clock here. The I appreciate the explanation from Ron Groover, the lead official. Cincinnati has the ball. They add a second. 52.1. Cincinnati down six. Two possession game. Room looking for help. Ooh, almost a turnover. Great catch by Cumberland. He's got Bo headed right on him. Cumberland for three. No. Offensive rebound. No. And it is Cook who secures it. Well, Jennifer had it in his clutches for a moment. Couldn't wrestle it down. Iowa ball. And Bohan, it looks like he's shaken up. He's clutching at his left elbow. So here we go. Side out for Iowa. 37.8 remaining. Two possession game. Iowa leads by six and got to get a timeout. Almost a five second violation. Iowa has one timeout remaining. Take a breath. Put your phones away. The final 37.8 coming up here from Columbus. On the sideline in front of that Cincinnati bench. Yeah, no one screamed for each other. They just kind of did a circular pattern. Garza was screaming at his guy saying, scream for each other. Get wide open. They're a good free throw shooting team, so just get the ball in. Wieskamp able to make the catch there and a foul. Bearcats looking for the charge. Cincinnati had Logan Johnson in the game. And he draws the foul. That'll be one and one for Iowa. Wieskamp to the line for the Hawkeyes. This is where Iowa again should have the most confidence leading the leading all of college basketball. 20 free throws per game. They knock them down at a high clip and they should invite the free throw game. Make it a three possession game. Calmly knocks it down. The freshman. Hits the first. Iowa by seven. Wieskamp a 75% free throw shooter, and he knocks them both down. Big clutch free throws for Joe Wieskamp. Cincinnati's got to go quick here. Room all the way in, he scores the layup. Again, two possession game. Nice work, Bohan of the touch pass. Then up ahead, here's Bear. And with an exclamation point. Bear with
with a two-handed jam. It's back up to eight for Iowa. Shot clock is off. 25.3 left. 6.2. And for Cincinnati, you need to get down the court as fast as you can again. The first opportunity is the best opportunity. See if you can get back in that press. Cumberland for three. And it's off the window. Oh, it's a five-point game and a quick foul on Bohannon. The crowd is upset because the clock kept on running after the play. They have the technology, as we know, to be able to reset it. And Cincinnati fans just want to make sure they use that technology. <laughs> and Iowa is saying, listen, we could use it all you want. You can reset it, but we want to go to the free throw line. And here, fans know. And again, if you're Bohannon, you just want to make sure you take your time, concentrate, and get to the line. 88% this year. Jordan Bohannon has got 12. One out of two from the line. Misses the first. Oh. So it's going to be a two-possession game regardless. Make or miss if you're Iowa. You do not want to foul on the next possession. Cincinnati in the double bonus with the next Iowa foul. Both teams in the double bonus. Got to go quick here. Kane Broom, he'll pull a long three. And it is Cook with the rebound. And Cook is fouled. And now Iowa can close it out. Cook is the worst free throw shooter among the five on the floor right now at 65%. The great thing, even though Cook is the worst free throw shooter, he's the best rebounder, and he's secured this possession. And right now, it's more about stops than makes for Iowa. These free throws important, but not as important as the last rebound that he got. Up five, up six with 11 seconds. And it's a big shot. Tyler Cook out of St. Louis. The junior. I tell you what, I've lived to play another day in these games after having a terrible game like he has. One for nine in foul trouble. I tell you what, these Iowa fans, as we see the emotion of Cincinnati going over there hugging their coach, watch out for Cook next game. Great players usually don't have two bats in a row. One out of two, the clock ticks. Here's Cumberland for three. No, it is Bear with the rebound, and that's going to do it. The Iowa Hawkeyes making it a perfect run for the Big Ten. 6-0 is the Big Ten as Iowa advances to the second round.